Welcome to the second part of episode 2, how to make Among Us in Unity. I'm Adrian and today we will dive into multiplayer and how remote procedure calls work by implementing the most rewarding action in Among Us, killing other players. If you haven't seen part 1, the video should appear right now. Also, for convenience, I have created a playlist containing all the episodes that have been released or will be released. Now, let's get into action. And we will start with the player's dead body. It will be a prefab, like the player, and after putting some sprites into it with the new graphics, we will make sure to place it in the resources folder to be able to be instantiated online. Let's create a player dead body script and dive right into it. Here, we will define the body's color to match the player's color. This is just the first step, we will look into it later for network synchronization. We will create a button called kill, which will be used to, well, kill other players in the range. The button is a simple Unity UI button. It can be easily customized as we want. While working on the multiplayer, I realized that the code was getting messy, so I opted to create some nice folders to neatly arrange everything in the project. The main part of the killing relies on the killable script. Here we will do multiple things like detecting if the player is in the range of another player and also send the kill event which will happen later on. To visually display the range we will use a line renderer. In the search for killable coroutine, we will check that the target entered the player range, which was specified above. Please take note here that find objects of type is a slow function of Unity and it shouldn't be called a lot, like every frame. This code is mostly to demonstrate how a network implementation works and it is not optimized yet. Since all the active players will possess the script killable, we can iterate through all of them, of course, that are different from the current player, which we will skip by calling continue. Next, we need to check the distance. And yes, we can use a vector tree even though we are in two dimensions. It will work just fine. If the object is in range, we will assign it to a new target. Lastly, since this is a coroutine, we must use the yield functionality and specify that this needs to wait a set interval. This will optimize the script a little since the range check won't happen every frame, but in a couple of seconds. A small correction here. 
I made the mistake, it's find objects, not find object. Otherwise, it will find only one object. Moving on to the player prefab. We need to add the killable script as well as the line render. You can customize it however you like with any color and width. We will also use the wire material created in the previous episode. This will make sure that the line gets rendered above other graphical elements. To make any script work with Photon, we need to extend from Mono Behavior Pan instead of the Unity's default one. Here we will start inserting Photon View is mine to check if it's the current player. And if it is, then we can check the target and do other stuff in the script. In update, also checking for the current player, we will need to set the line renderer's position to point out the correct target. And if there is no target, to disable it by giving both of the positions 0 and 1 the value 0, 0, 0. Let's create a new UI control script which will handle the kill button. The kill button will be disabled if you don't have anything in range and enable if there is another player that you can kill. And it will be a singleton, a script that can be accessed by other scripts very easily. Be careful though with singletons, as abusing them might lead to spaghetti code. The UI callback on the kill button pressed is called by the UI button and will trigger a function in the killable script. Moving back to the killable, we will initialize the UI control with the current player. We know it's the current player because the other players won't pass through photon view is mine. We are calling this in start and not in awake because the UI control instance won't be initialized in that step and it will cause a null pointer reference. Now we need to set the UI's control target. This will enable or disable the kill button. Before proceeding with the multiplayer implementation, let's do a small introduction into networking functionalities. Usually, there are two main ways to transmit data from one point to another. And these are synchronized state and remote procedure calls. They need to be mixed and matched in a project because both have pros and cons. What we have used mostly until this point is the synchronized state, which is very fast, but some packages might be lost on the way. 
usually this is used to synchronize position which gets updated every frame and it doesn't matter if a particular position is synced or not. The RPCs, remote procedure calls, on the other hand, are more sparse. They are sent from time to time, they will arrive 100% of the time on the other side, and you will use them to signal a specific event like kill or around start. If we take a look at how the synchronized state sends data, the flow is usually in one direction as the object A packs the information in the owner, player 1, and sends it to also object A in player 2. Here, the data will be deserialized and used to perform a specific action. Notice that object A appears on both ends with the same name. Photon identifies objects by photon view and an object on any PC in the system will have the same ID no matter where. Looking at remote procedure calls, on the other hand, it's a back and forth transaction as each node can call the function on the other. Now let's get back to the killable with the new knowledge. Firstly here, we will implement a local function named kill, which will be called by the UI button in UI control. What is important here is that we will get a reference to the photon view in the target. If you remember from the previous slide, the photon view ID is unique on all the clients. Next, we will send to that photon view a call to its own RPC, which will be called kill RPC. Of course, this will call an RPC on all the clients so we need to make sure that only the owner of it executes the kill. The actual kill RPC, it spawns a new player dead body and also resets the current player's position to another one to simulate it has been killed. To implement an RPC, we will create a regular unity function. What is different though, is that we need to specify pan RPC on top of that function for the Photon library to be able to recognize it as a correct RPC. Also, since the owner of the body is the current player, we will also need to set the body's color to the kill player. And here I made a mistake on the code on the screen. I'll post an update right now. What I realized is that we don't need to send the ID of the photon view because you already have it. And we only need to check if the player owns the photon ID. Then we can easily kill it because it won't be any issues. One last thing, don't forget to add the photon view to the player body prefab. Otherwise it won't be able to be instantiated over the network. The kill button also needs to be integrated with the UI control script. By the way, the UI control is on the canvas. We need to reference the button from it and from the button to call the kill function. Let's put it to a test. It should work. Well, not. Notice a problem though? The body color does not change on the killer side. This is because it was not synchronized over the network.
Let's fix that. We will use a sync state on the player dead body. This is very similar to the player color synchronized in the first video. A different thing though is that instead of sending the color index and picking it from a list, we will serialize the color itself. This is another way how we can transmit color over the network. Basically sending the red, green and blue channels and decoding them on the other side to create a color. Then we apply the color to the body fill. And this is the result. It works now. Here are the scripts for this video. The part 3 of episode 2 will be coming this week as well. Be sure you are subscribed with the notifications turned on in order not to miss it. I'm Adrian and I'm signing out.